My name is Kay Larson and I'm doing my presentation on Hannah Ardent. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I have yet to find anything that tells me the correct pronunciation of her last name. Um, anyway, uh, she was born uh, October 14th, 1906 and passed away December 4th, 1975. So she is no longer with us and so we can't uh, continue to look at her work in present day times. Um, she studied philosophy at the University of Marburg. Uh, she also studied at Albert Ludwig University of Freiburg and the University of Heidelberg, uh, where she received her doctoral degree in 1928. If I pronounce those wrong, I am sorry, I don't speak German. Uh, so a few interesting things about her is uh, she had to flee Paris uh, to the United States once the Nazis uh, came over and uh, occupied France. She was Jewish, so she uh, had greater reason to run. Uh, Later on uh, in the United States, she uh, went on to teach at the University of Chicago from 1963 to 67 and New School for Social Research in NYC. I couldn't find any dates for that. Uh, and she herself viewed the growth of totalitarianism as the outcome of uh, the disintegration of the traditional nation state arguing that those regimes, through the pursuit of raw political power and their neglect of material or utilitarian, I cannot pronounce that for whatever reason, considerations had revolutionized the social structure and made contemporary politics near impossible to predict. Um, so since we're just starting in the neo-Marxist perspective, I will give a brief overview, um, from Cell Now. Uh, neo-Marxist perspective helps expose how material conditions and economic practices shape dominant ideology regarding taken-for-granted assumptions about who ought to be and who ought not to be empowered. It also focuses uh, upon how popular culture texts reinforce or rejects the status quo power structures as normal and common sense. Also focuses on whether or not the text empowers and empower, disempowers uh, people simultaneously. So that's just a brief overview. And you should read the chapter and, and everything to get a better perspective. Um, I am specifically uh, doing uh, her work called The Great Tradition to Ruling and Be Ruled. Um, I couldn't tell if it was a chapter from a book or anything, but I found it rather interesting. So, um, in this work, uh, Ardent reflects upon the meaning of tyranny and where the difference in ruling and being ruled within various uh, governments and societies, particularly Roman and Greek, being uh, one of the main focuses. Uh, she also takes particular note upon the rule over women and slaves, uh, but that is not her primary focus in this work. Um, I found that interesting because uh, she did grow up in a time where women weren't supposed to succeed. So, I assume her reasonings for specifically uh, uh, mentioning women and slaves is uh, because of her own personal experiences and uh, from what I understand at the time of writing this, uh, the civil rights movement uh, was more recent. Um, and I found this particular quote from her on tyranny that I rather liked. The principal aim of the tyrant is to condemn men to their private household, which is to deprive them of the possibility of their humanity. Uh, one thing that I found a little difficult in reading this is uh, English was not her first language, so 
while she probably spoke and wrote rather well, uh, sometimes I it went over my head. That could either be me or it could have been uh, English not being her first language. Uh, anyway, um, in Ruling and Be Ruled, uh, Arden believes that when tyranny happens, the tyrant not only shuts down the political opposition within the society, but all human life and experience begin to come to an end. This becomes prevalent because the example she used, which was uh, specifically uh, the Romans and Greeks, as I mentioned. Um, so uh, she uses her work to analyze what she calls kingship, which from what I understand is leadership, and how historically it has become a tyrannic society. Um, specifically, she quote, I will quote, uh, where the element of free engagement is absent, kingship becomes a monarchy and, according to Plato, is tyranny when obedience is not granted voluntarily. Um, so I found that rather interesting because, uh, in our society, we elect someone. And so we are voluntarily giving someone that power. However, uh, in terms of like monarchies and dictatorships, that ruling is n not always voluntar voluntarily given. So, and when you look historically, uh, a lot of monarchies and whatnot would be considered tyrannic societies or I would say dictatorships. Um, anyway, uh, <clears throat> in the end, she says, uh, what everyone fights for is survival, and in trying to survive and live our best lives, we suffer bad leadership. Uh, in trying to truly survive and stay with the family and the people that we love, we will choose a leader. Um, that we believe will give us that, but that leader not all, not always gives us the things that they promise. We also have historically seen that in the United States. Not all presidents can uh, uh, deliver on what they had promised, uh, most recently being Trump and his wall. Uh, when the mid and specifically, uh, Sometimes uh, those things that they can't deliver on, sp like uh, in times of World War II, uh, the United States didn't want to engage in that. We wanted to stay away from that. And, uh, but unfortunately, the United States didn't get what they want. And war is typically what the leader or the kingship typically goes after, historically, I believe. And she said, and Arden says, when the military becomes the focal point of government, it leads to leaders being away from the people, and that all creates a lot of problems within the society that uh, the leader is in charge of. Uh, some examples would be monetarily problems, uh, some developmental problems, and uh, civil war or just general conflict within the people. Um, and many try to become that leader, and sometimes that's uh, where uh, aristocracy is born. Historically, those aristocrats uh, held leadership positions and reported back to the main leader, or the king, or whatever title they wanted to give themselves. And this posed a problem when those uh, aristocrat aristocracies wanted more glory or or just wanted more in general this leads to conflict and this is the main flaw within this form of rule as she mentions um Arden concludes her observation upon various forms of government uh, with small analysis on the united states government uh, she'll please that our mixed government the way that we have it is uh, 
It means that tyranny is harder to achieve, however, it is still possible. And I found that rather interesting because uh, in this uh, recent election, it has been contentious, and I truly do believe that we could eventually elect a tyrant because we aren't truly focusing on what is right. Uh, she specifically states, the tyrant sins equally against all the fundamental traits of the human condition in its political aspect. He pretends to be able to act completely alone. He isolates men from each other by sowing fear and mistrust between them, thereby destroying equality together with man's capacity to act. And I believe that means, with, with the right uh, means, the tyrant can spring up in any government, including ours. And um, I believe that was rather interesting to read, and uh, I look forward to uh, answering any questions that you have on Anna Ardent.